get talking about a couple of companies. CCL products is up in trade after reporting what was a mixed set of Q3 numbers. Revenue has risen 24% year on year. There's a rise in cost of materials, finance costs, which has impacted profitability. To discuss this, we have with us Chala Srisanth, who is the managing director of the company, joining in. Hi, sir. Thanks uh, very much for taking the time out. Well, there has been some amount of momentum which is picked up in terms of your revenue. 665 odd crores compared to 607 crores last quarter. And uh, year on year as well, there is a good growth which has come through of around 24%. Uh, can you tell us how much of it was driven by volumes? How much of it was driven by realizations? Uh, so actually, our volume growth in this particular quarter was in the range of approximately around 14%. Uh, but that is also because uh, because of the Red Sea issue, there's a couple of deferments that uh, took place which got dispatched in the month of January. So if that had come in, it would have been closer to around uh, 19 to 20% uh, in quarter three. Right. There were some uh, you know issues in the previous quarter as well. This was with regards to the Vietnam plant. So just wanted to know uh, the first nine months of this year, what has been the volume growth and where do you stand with regards to your uh, target of 20% plus volume growth this year? Yeah, so the volume growth uh, till now is in the range of approximately 11%. And mm -hmm. uh, what we have guided for the year was actually around 18 to 20%. And uh, there was a 5% impact that is there because of the, uh, uh, the accident that took place in uh, quarter two. And uh, that if the insurance claim comes through, then basically there won't be any revision in the guidance. If it doesn't come through in this uh, particular quarter, then there'll be a 5% reduction. Did you manage to uh, assess what the loss due to that was and how much is the insurance claim which is pending? Yes, approximately around 5% is the loss that was assessed. 5% of the bottom line is what we hmm. had uh, assessed. Okay. All right, just coming to a breakup in terms of uh, the domestic as well as the international markets. Uh, can you tell us what exactly the volume growth has been in both the markets this, this time round? And what are you guiding on? Because there were some capacity constraints. You're expected to get additional capacity on board by, say, April. Uh, how would that change things around? So the performance this quarter and uh, what you're guiding for as well. Uh, so the domestic volumes have gone up uh, to around 40%. Uh, and as far as the uh, overall uh, export volumes are concerned for the group, that also has uh, gone up uh, uh, significantly. It's just that, again, because of the dispatches, it's not mm -hmm. getting uh, reflected in the particular quarter. Uh, that said, as far as capacities are concerned, within India, we are already at that peak capacity. The new capacity should be coming online in March. Uh, and uh, as far as the uh, Vietnam capacity is concerned, there is better utilization over there as well because the new capacity came online about a year ago and we are optimally util utilizing that now. So uh, it's about 100% right now. You had some uh, freeze-dried capacity coming in Vietnam in the second half of next year as well, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, for the next year, you maintain this 18 to 20 percent sort of volume growth with about 100 rupees per kg EBITDA per ton guidance that you've been uh, doing yes. for the last uh, year or so, right? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was the contribution of small packs in the third quarter? Uh, so there was an increase in small, max, uh, small packs as well. That's actually one of the reasons why the expenses also had gone up a bit in uh, India. Okay. All right. Let's just come to uh, your operational performance. You did mention your EBITDA per kg would be uh, EBITDA per kg would be around hundred rupees. Uh, what would that probably do to your margins, including the fact that there was some disruption in terms of volumes on account of Red Sea as well. Uh, so. You know, how much of an impact did you th see this quarter from these kind of one-offs? And what are you guiding for in terms of margins going forward? Uh, so as far as the margins are concerned, they largely remain unchanged. The only difference is that uh, we were a little bit more aggressive in Vietnam to mm. fill capacity. So we sacrificed on margins a little bit over there. Uh, but that's, again, more or less temporary in nature. And uh, as far as the Red Sea impact is concerned, about uh, 
Uh, more than 70% of our contracts are CIF contracts. So whatever is the okay. cost gets passed on. Uh, so only the FOB contracts, uh, I mean, the CIF contracts that we have done will, uh, will not get uh, passed on. So okay. um, that is uh, one positive advantage. And whatever deferment that is there, whatever was supposed to take place in the last week of uh, December did get dispatched in the first week of uh, January. So what didn't come in the previous quarter will come in in this quarter. So overall, when you look at it for the year, there won't be much of an impact. But you did do peak margins of, say, 21%, 22% just a few quarters ago. Uh, so when do you probably revert back to those levels? Oh, so we will be reverting uh, over a period of time. Now with the new capacities that have come online, if we are operating at optimal levels, then automatically mm. we will start getting better uh, realizations as well. So the better the capacity utilization, the better the margins mm. will be as well. Okay, let's talk about a couple of, uh, you know, new growth vectors that you seeded. One of them was the premium products, which include the likes of cold brew, specialty coffees, etc. was close to 15% of your volumes. You were expecting that to increase. How much did that do? The second one was London-based brands that you... We're looking to, you know, take it to almost 100 crores of revenue. Where is that? And the third one is the domestic business. What's been the update there with regards to increased distribution, increased market share? What kind of business did you do? Yeah. So uh, as far as the first question is concerned, the specialty products and all, it's in a similar percentage that we're working mm -hmm. with. So the volumes are increasing uh, on the same proportion that our regular exports are also increasing. So that is a positive sign for us. And uh, as far as the London uh, uh, acquisition is concerned, uh, this year was a consolidation year for us. The transition took place. Uh, we'll start shifting over to our supplies from the month of March onwards. So from uh, March onwards, once we shift, that's when we'll have a lot more control with respect to the products, the revamping that we're doing. So this year we were actually preventing a reduction in market share in the UK market. And we were mm -hmm. largely successful to that uh, effect as well. And the domestic business? Yeah, so domestic business is growing at about 40% uh, uh, this year and next year also it is growing. We already have a, a break-even that took place last year. So we've seen about a 5% EBITDA margin this year. And uh, again, one of the guidance that we're given is we're focusing on top line growth. So we're not really improving the EBITDA uh, percentage growth uh, for the domestic market, at least for the next year or two. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's CCL products. The stock is up around three odd percent. We need to take a short break. 